Hey you, what is up everybody, Chuck here, and welcome to today's Pokemon Go video. We are going to be answering the long debated question, what is the rarest Pokemon in Pokemon Go? Or maybe better put, what is the Pokemon that is the hardest to get in Pokemon Go? And to make this a little bit easier to picture, imagine that Pokemon Go launched today with Gen 1 and Gen 2, and you don't have to remember previous events or what used to come in eggs. We're starting fresh. What Pokemon would take the longest to get? Let's get into it. Now, instead of going Pokemon by Pokemon and eliminating the ones that simply aren't rare, we're gonna eliminate Pokemon in batches and obviously just ignore common Pokemon like Pidgey, Zubat, Weedle, stuff like that. So first off, we have to eliminate Pokemon that nest. So I'm sorry, Gyarados. I'm sorry, Fully Evolved Starter Pokemon. You're done. I mean, if you really wanted a Gyarados or a Charizard, all you have to do is go to a Magikarp nest or a Charmander nest and just hang out there for a couple hours, or in the Gyarados case, a couple days, and you'll end up with a Gyarados. You technically only need to catch about 75 Magikarp with Pineapple Berries, so it wouldn't be too difficult to do in a couple days. Shiny Gyarados, on the other hand, we'll get to that later. Next, and unfortunately, we have to eliminate Pokemon, any Pokemon, that is a raid boss. Again, we're basing this kind of off of ease of acquisition, so assuming you have a few friends or just a couple random people in your town that play Pokemon Go and show up to a raid, you can easily end the day with a Muck, a Snorlax, a Weezing, a Lapras, and of course, a Tyranitar. Now I know, Tyranitar isn't even easy to catch after a raid, but that doesn't change the fact that it is no longer a hyper rare Pokemon in this game. I mean, hypothetically, you could get 5 or 10 Tyranitar in a day, assuming you can actually catch them, which... I can't. But we'll also get to a couple other reasons why Tyranitar really isn't as rare as you think it is. Now next up, and kind of playing off of what I just said, we have to eliminate biome-friendly Pokemon. Pokemon that don't necessarily nest, but definitely appear way more frequently in certain biomes. Pokemon like Tangela, who appears way more frequently in water biomes, eliminate. Same thing with Aerodactyl, spawns way more frequently in water biomes, that's why you see people and YouTubers catching them all the time in Santa Monica, like I did, and it just won't be able to compare to some of these Pokemon that we're going to get to in a little bit. Now we've already eliminated Tyranitar, but we're also going to eliminate Ampharos and Dragonite, and all of their pre-evolutions. On average, over a 24-hour span here in Northern Colorado, which keep in mind is about a 100-mile radius, not just my little city, about 700 Mareep spawn here per day. To put that into perspective, we see about 750 Sand True per day, so Mareep really isn't that rare when you think about it. Also about 450 Larvitar spawn over any 24 hour period here in Northern Colorado, not too rare. Now I know there's plenty of you guys watching this right now who are like, yo, I don't see any Mareep, yo, I don't see any Larvitar, yo, where are my Dratini? Well, number one, Dratini is actually the most common Pokemon that hatches from 10k eggs, which is why Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite are now eliminated. But also, if it makes it any easier for you to participate in this imaginary Pokedex completion, so imagine you get to travel to the nearest big city, and still, these Pokemon will not be the hardest ones to add to your Pokedex. I promise. Also, Mareep, Larvitar, and Dratini, none of them are in the rarest tier of 10k eggs, so they're all eliminated. Speaking of eggs, let's look at eggs. Unfortunately, Donphan is really not that rare. Very cool to find in the wild, and Donphan itself is kind of rare, but not hard to get because Fampi is the easiest tied of all the 5k Pokemon to hatch from an egg. Sorry, Donphan. But how about Blissey? Well, to put that into perspective, Chansey spawns twice as frequently as Bulbasaur does in Northern Colorado, and Bulbasaur has nests here in Northern Colorado. How does that- Chansey's really not that rare here, and really isn't too rare across the world unless you live in a town of seven, in which case everything is rare. And again, Chansey isn't even in the rarest tier of 10k eggs, and Blissey is of course catchable in the wild, and spawns about as frequently as Snorlax does. So, Blissey, you are eliminated. Now another Pokemon we haven't yet eliminated, Lickitung. Lickitung's a toughie to find in the wild, and is actually tied for the rarest Pokemon to hatch from an egg. However, it spawns about as commonly as Blissey and Snorlax do, and therefore, Lickitung you are eliminated. Now don't get me wrong, these Pokemon are rare, they just aren't in that top, 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 top tier of rarity, believe me. Also, Togetic. Togetic is rare to find in the wild by itself, however, Togepi hatches with the same frequency as all the other baby Pokemon do from 2k eggs, and therefore, not gonna make it. Okay, so that leaves us with Porygon, Porygon 2, Shiny Gyarados, and Unknown, but we're gonna eliminate Porygon because Porygon 2 is obviously more rare than Porygon. And I'm gonna make a case for why Porygon 2 could be considered the rarest Pokemon in the game. All right, so first things first, when you spin a Pokestop and you close your eyes and you end up with an egg and you don't know what color it is before you know the color, it has a 0.3% chance of being a Porygon. Now, obviously that changes if it turns out to be green or gold because then it won't be a Porygon, but you get it. That is tied for the rarest of any 
Pokemon in the game. To put it into perspective, over the last 24 hours here in Northern Colorado, about five Dragonites and five Tyranitars have spawned, and exactly one Porygon has spawned. And although Porygon may spawn a little bit more frequently in larger cities like New York City or maybe even Santa Monica, it doesn't seem to depend on biomes. Porygon just simply doesn't give a shit where you live. And the reason a lot of you guys are probably sitting here, especially the ones who already have a Porygon 2 and are like, Chuck, Porygon 2 isn't rare, dude. Well, you have had over a year to save up 50 Porygon candy to evolve your Porygon 2, and almost five months to get an upgrade to evolve your Porygon. Now, if we're doing the math here, it would take approximately 333 eggs to basically guarantee that you get a Porygon from one of them. Now, assuming you don't find any in the wild and you don't set it as your buddy for a month, you'd have to hatch approximately 1,000 eggs to get enough candy simply from hatching to evolve your Porygon into a Porygon 2. But again, it doesn't stop there. You still need an upgrade. Now, you're guaranteed an evolution item once every week as long as you're playing every single day. So don't skip a day or otherwise you gotta wait another week. And there are five different evolution items and they all have approximately the same drop rate. So again, playing the numbers game, if you play for five weeks straight and don't skip a day, there's a decent chance you'll end up with an upgrade, although that process could take like four months if you get unlucky, of which you'll need to actually find a Porygon in the wild or hatch a thousand eggs, so good luck! Another reason, and probably the only reason I even have a Porygon 2, is because of the Valentine's Day event when they increase spawns, but like I said at the beginning of this video, we are assuming everything starts fresh today. No Porygon event. I'm gonna be honest, I'd be screwed. And did I mention that you can't actually catch Porygon 2, meaning you can't just get lucky once like you can with a Tyranitar or a Dragonite or a Lapras or a Snorlax. You have to get lucky to, to catch a Porygon or to hatch one and then hatch another one or catch another one or, or walk like 200 kilometers and also get lucky with an upgrade. You can't just get lucky once, you gotta get lucky like four times. It's pretty rare. Now that leaves us with a shiny Gyarados and the odds of finding a shiny Magikarp are approximately 1 in 300 to 1 in 400. So let's say you've got a Magikarp nest and at any given time at a Magikarp nest you can probably expect to find between 5 to 10 maybe even 15 Magikarp. If you hang out at a Magikarp nest for a couple hours for every single day that it's there you'll probably see approximately 500 to 600 Magikarp over the course of the nest. You will easily find yourself a shine. But neither of these even come close to comparing to an unknown. Let's imagine for a second that trackers don't exist and you cannot spoof. Uh, none of us have an unknown then. I mean, let's be real. Have we ever actually seen one nearby and been like, oh, I should probably go get that? No, I saw it on a scanner for my city and I was like, oh my God, it's 8 a.m. I'm gonna go catch an unknown. And it was hidden in this little cul-de-sac. It wasn't anywhere near a Pokestop which meant that if there wasn't a tracker that showed me where it was, I would have had to have been living at that house to catch it. And uh, I didn't live there, so it would have been impossible. To put it into perspective, a big city like Sydney, Australia will see about a dozen Dragonites and a dozen Tyranitars over the course of a day, and will be lucky to see one or two unknown. That makes it about 10 times as rare as a Dragonite and a Tyranitar just to catch in the wild. We're not even taking into consideration the fact that you can get a Tyranitar from a raid, or hatch a Dratini, or a Larvitar, or catch any of its pre-evolved forms and set it as your buddy. With an unknown, you have to simply catch an unknown, and it's really, really, really hard to do. Now, there is no definitive number that states exactly how rare an unknown is, but let me put it like this. If an unknown is a 10 out of 10 on the rarity scale, a Porygon 2 is probably like a 0.8 out of 10, and a Dragonite Tyranitar and Ampharos are probably like a 0.3 out of 10. That is 30 times easier to obtain. Now don't get me wrong, I made this video because I was like, you know what, I think Porygon 2 may be the rarest. And I did a little bit of research and I read people's opinions and stuff and experiences with their si I found a cat. Um, so this one is, this is not rare. Seriously, I wanted Porygon 2 to win this. I really did. And that's why I made this video, but I couldn't do it. I mean, Unknown is so ridiculously rare that I bet 99.999% of us watching this video right now would not have one if it wasn't for scanners. So if we started fresh today and played by the rules, Unknown would definitely be the hardest to find. I mean, Shiny Gyarados may be in this conversation if Magikarp wasn't a nesting Pokemon. I mean, the way I look at it is with both Porygon and Unknown, there is no one place on Earth that I could travel to right now without looking at a scanner and be like, I am 100% sure that at some point while standing here, one of these Pokemon will spawn. But there you have it. I'm sure all of you guys knew all along that it was going to be unknown. And if any of you guys have any Pokemon you think are somehow rarer than Porygon 2 and unknown, 
let me know in the comment section below. Also, regional exclusives, they don't count. I see a Tauros every few days. When I was down in Florida, I saw a Heracross and a Corsola basically every day. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you are new here and you enjoy Pokemon Go videos like this one, make sure you subscribe. I love you guys. Take it easy.